In a world where the new is idolized, this afternoon we take great pleasure in sharing an old, old story. Listen to the words of the prophet Isaiah, first spoken thousands of years ago. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Yes, his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. This afternoon we celebrate the God who is with us, Jesus Christ, our Emmanuel. We will begin our story as Luke the Apostle did in the first chapter of his Gospel. There was in the days of Herod a certain priest named Zechariah, and his wife's name was Elizabeth. They were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren, and both had grown too old. But today they would come to realize that with God, nothing is impossible.
answered in a way too wonderful for even this righteous man to believe. However, because of his unbelief, he lost his ability to speak. The angel Gabriel prophesied that Elizabeth would give birth to a son who was to be named John, and that many would rejoice and be glad. Zechariah, filled with fearful amazement, was also filled with great joy at the announcement of this incredible miracle but he could not express that joy in words. After his wife Elizabeth knew she had conceived, she spoke words of praise unto the God who had dealt so kindly with her and taken her reproach away. In the six months of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to speak to a young woman who lived in the town of Nazareth. Her name was Mary, and she was engaged to a man named Joseph, who was of the lineage of David. She was naturally confused when the angel Gabriel told her that she would conceive a child because she was not yet married and was still a virgin. Then Gabriel said to her, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy Child that you shall give birth to shall be called the Son of God.
Behold the handmaid of the Lord, let it be done unto me according to your word. These faith-filled words were spoken by Mary to the angel Gabriel and to God. Later on, she spoke confidently about this miracle to her fiancé, Joseph. It was, however, too difficult for him to believe, and he decided to break their engagement privately. Shortly thereafter, the angel Gabriel appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. It was then that he realized that he too was highly favored.
Gabriel revealed unto Mary that her cousin Elizabeth had also conceived a child. So she traveled as quickly as she could into the hill country of Judah and entered into Zachariah's house. When she arrived, she greeted her cousin Elizabeth warmly. As Mary spoke, the babe inside of Elizabeth leapt for joy, and she was filled with the Holy Spirit and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. What an honor to have the mother of my Lord here with me. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. It must have been a great blessing for Mary and Elizabeth to spend time together and talk of the wonderful things that had happened and all that would take place in the future. Mary returned to Nazareth about three months later. Shortly thereafter, Elizabeth gave birth to a son just as God had promised. Her neighbors and her cousins heard that the Lord had showed great mercy on her and they rejoiced with her. What a celebration that must have been. The Lord has been so merciful. Let us now rejoice. The Lord has been so kind to you. Elizabeth, rejoice. Elizabeth, rejoice.
day, all of these friends and relatives who celebrated with Zachariah and Elizabeth came together to witness the dedication and circumcision of the child. It was assumed by all present that the child would be named Zachariah after his father, but Elizabeth surprised everyone by boldly insisting that her child's name was to be John. When they all looked to Zechariah for a final answer, he wrote five words that caused all of them to marvel. The words were, his name shall be John. Have you heard it's a boy just eight days ago? Child 
shall go before the face of the Lord to prepare all his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people, forgiveness for their sins. Through the tender mercies of our God, whereby the day people that are sitting in darkness, the people in the shadow of death, the people who are aching for guidance, will at last receive their rest.
It came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Everyone went to be taxed, each to his own town of origin. Joseph was required to travel to Bethlehem because he was of the lineage of David. The journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem was almost 120 miles across very, very rough terrain. Mary most likely rode on the back of a donkey, a difficult way for anyone to travel. But when we consider that she was at least eight and a half months pregnant at that time, it becomes apparent that this was a great test of faith for both of them. When they finally arrived in Bethlehem, this small city was bustling with people all frantically searching for a place to stay for the evening.
We thank you and praise you once again your hand has guided us to safety. Joseph and Mary spent a sleepless night surrounded by farm animals and lying on a straw-covered dirt floor because they could not find lodging in the hotel. In this humble setting, Mary gave birth to the Son of God. Many years earlier, the prophet Micah was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write that Bethlehem, even though it was such a small city, was to be the birthplace of the Messiah. And so the Son of the Most High was born in a lowly stable, and besides Mary and Joseph, the first people to witness the newborn child were of equally humble origin. This is what the Apostle Luke wrote uh, concerning what took place that holy night just outside of Bethlehem under the starry sky. There were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Suddenly the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were exceedingly afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you glad tidings of great joy, which shall be unto you and to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men.
And it came to pass, as the angels ascended into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now into Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. The shepherds ran quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the babe who was cradled in a manger. They explained that the angels had informed them of the birth of this special child, and they glorified and praised God for all the things they had heard and seen, for it was just as the angels had said unto them. These men left their sheep to see the one who would eventually be known as the Good Shepherd. And although the angels proclaimed that this baby was to be our savior and king, these shepherds did not realize that the child they kneeled before and worshiped was to be called the Lamb of God. foretold him with loud voices. The angels announced his birth and lit up the darkened skies of Bethlehem. But this is how redemption comes into this sin-blackened world, not with pomp and great splendor, not with loud trumpets and fanfare, but with a baby's first gasp of air, a small cry, and a sweet lullaby. Revealed 
A star shone brightly above a lowly stable where a virgin gave birth to her firstborn son. And that star shone so bright in the heavens that it could be seen hundreds, if not thousands, of miles away. Its appearance was so significant that three kings, all very wise men, made a special trip to find this king of the Jews and offer gifts and worship unto him.
The men followed this bright star until they came to Jerusalem. They approached King Herod, who was a very, very evil man, and said to him, Where is he that is born the king of the Jews? We have seen his star and followed it, and we desired to worship him. King Herod demanded his own advisors to tell him where the scriptures say that the Christ shall be born. They searched and they searched and they quoted the prophet Micah to him. But you, Bethlehem Ephrata, though you will be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come a ruler whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Little did these wise men know that King Herod only gave this information to them in order to use them to fulfill his own wicked plans. King Herod, so puffed up with pride, would not allow another king to rival him, not even a tiny one born in a stable. in Bethlehem. 
Him. And when you find this King, please tell me that I might worship Him. Please tell me. Now go. Go and find Him, and when you do, please come and tell me that I too might worship Him along with you. insulting me like this. Don't they know who I am? I am the king! On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. When the time of the purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the salvation of Israel, and the Spirit of God was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace, for at last my eyes have seen your salvation. There was also a prophetess named Anna. She was an 84-year-old widow who never left the temple but worshipped night and day fasting and praying. When she saw the infant Jesus, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. <laughs>
At last I have seen him, my salvation. Yes, I've seen the face of God in the face of your sweet child. When the wise men left King Herod to continue their search for Jesus, the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was lying. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold like and of idea. frankincense and of myrrh. having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, the wise men returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So Joseph got up took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt. Arise, Joseph, arise, Joseph, take the 
realized that he had been outwitted by the wise men, he was furious. He then gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and in its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the wise men.
Then what was said to the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great sorrow. It is Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. It is quite likely that King Herod felt no guilt for the indescribable suffering he had caused. When he discovered that there might be a new king rising to power, even a defenseless baby boy, he thought he could crush him in an instant. Isn't it ironic that although apparently Herod believed the prophecies concerning the Messiah, he did not believe the rest of the Holy Scriptures, for if he did, he would have heeded King David's prophetic warning. Thus says the Lord, do not touch my anointed one.
We think of Herod as a cruel man for trying to kill Jesus, and it's true he was, but we must remember this. Herod was not successful in killing Jesus, but all of us were. It was our sin that put him on that cross and our sin that he died for. Christmas, the celebration of Christ, is not complete without the cross. He was born to die for you and me. The good news is Jesus did not stay on that cross. He conquered death. He conquered hell and the grave and arose victoriously for you and for me. Celebrate Christmas by inviting the Christ to Christmas to rule and reign in your heart tonight and forevermore. Born to die for me, he was born to die for me, from Bethlehem to Calvary, he was born to die for me. born to set me free. God with us, God with us, from heaven down to earth. God with us, God with us, He died to Of the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth should have everlasting life born to die for me he was born to die for me from bethlehem to calvary he was born Oh. 